Hello everyone. So in this video, I'm going to introduce an empirical method for estimating the probability of floods, and that's the Weibull plotting position. First, Pepper has a message. Good morning, everyone. It's Pepper. I just want to say I really love learning about floods and hope you do too. Enjoy. Thanks, Pepper. Okay, so let's talk about the Weibull plotting position. So this is an empirical method for determining or estimating the probability um, that any flow will happen. And what it does is it provides an estimate of the probability, so this is an estimate, of the probability of some observation m, so m is the observation, being equaled or exceeded. So it's going to give us an estimate for the probability of exceedance. Okay, And the probability of exceedance we're going to call P, and it is equal to M divided by N plus 1. And M is the rank of any observation. When we sort it, when we sort the observations from large to small. Okay, so we're going to sort them from large to small, and then m is the rank. So if an m is 1, that's the largest. And n is our total number of values of our observations. As you can might expect, the accuracy of this method is going to increase as and improve as you increase your sample size, so depending on how many samples you have. Okay, so let's do an example to really learn about this. So we're going to do this step by step. And so we're going to determine the probability of exceedance and non-exceedance for 10 annual peak flows in for the Saddle River, New Jersey. And the flows are listed, and they're all in CFS. So our first step is going to be to rank and sort these flows from highest to lowest and calculate the probabilities of exceedance and not exceedance using the table provided. Okay, so looking through this, looking through the list, I'm going to find the highest flow. And that highest flow is the 1630 CFS. So I'm going to write it up here in the first table. The next one is 1320. Okay, and I'm going to go all the way down and rank them. So I encourage you here to pause the video, go to the worksheet, and try to rank them and see if you get it in the right order. Okay, so I've ranked all the flows from smallest to largest, and now I'm going to use my equation that we saw in the last slide, P equals M over n plus 1 to calculate the probability of exceedance for each of those flows. Okay, so that first one, that 1630, my m is 1, my m is going to be 11 for all of these. I'm going to calculate that my probability of exceedance is equal to 1 over 11, which is 0 0.09. Okay, so 9%. And then F, which is the probability of non-exceedance, so what is the probability that you see a flow less than or equal to that, is going to be 1 minus that P, which is 0 0.91. Okay, let's do the second one together. So in this case, my P is going to be 2 over 11, which is equal to 0 0.18. And my F is going to be 0 
0.82, okay? So go ahead, pause it, and try and fill out the rest of this table for yourself. Okay, so here's the table completely filled out. And again, real quick, because I know that this distinction can be a little bit confusing, let's talk about the difference between P, the probability of exceedance, and F, the probability of non-exceedance, okay? So when we talk about this 1630 CFS, the probability of exceedance is the probability that we see at least 1630, a flow of 1630, or more, okay? And the higher the flow is, the least, the less you're likely to experience that flow, right? So you have only a 0 0.09 or a 9% chance that you're gonna hit that flow or greater. And so you have a 91% chance of getting less than or equal to that flow, okay? And then when you get all the way down to the lowest flow, the 418 CFS, you have a 91% chance of seeing at least that much flow, which these are usually maximums per year, and only a 9% chance of seeing less than that flow. Okay, so hopefully that helps. Okay, so that's great for those specific flows, but we wanna be able to use this to figure out um, where any of our flow lays and what its probability is. So we're gonna do that by using um, probability paper. And so we're gonna plot the flows on this probability paper. You will see here that we have the probability of non-exceedance on the bottom. The probability of exceedance misspelled on the top and then flow is on both the right and the left um, and this is special probability paper for making um, these types of plots so we're going to try and plot these values okay and to kind of show you how this works let's i'm going to plot this first one together with you so i'm going to find a q of 1630 and that's going to be i'm going to do my best here to draw this that did not work out very well but this is this line here is approximately the 1630 so let's see if i can extend this for you here we go so this is about 1630 it's a little bit less right well it's about 1630 right on this line so remember this is like a log plot okay so that's this about the 1630. now we need to find the probability of exceedance which is again on the top of 0.09 Okay, so this vertical red line is approximately in that 9% spot. So then I just come in here, and I'll do this in blue, and I plot that first point. Okay, so there we go. And then we're going to just repeat that for each of the rest of my flows. Okay, so I've done my best here to add the rest of the dots onto this figure, and hopefully you can see them okay. Okay, um, so the next step is to attempt to draw a linear line, like a best fit line on of this data. And this is really hard, but you really just eyeball it, okay? So I'm gonna show you the approximate line on, the, on my next slide here. Okay, so here's all the points again. This is just a photocopy. Um, and then I've done my best to approximate a straight line on the data. And I've marked here as well a few important spots. For example, this is the 100 year flow. And I know it's the 100 year flow because of this probability of exceedance of 10%, okay? So the probability of exceedance of 10% is a 100-year flow. And then this is my 10-year flow, this Q10. And again, this is not going to be um, one of the flows that was part of the observations. Instead, you're extrapolating onto the straight line, right? And so my 10-year flow is going to be, you know, about what it was in our observation because ours was pretty, we observed one really close. But we didn't get to a 10, you know, 10 percent or a 100 year flow, and so we have to use this straight line to approximate it. And you have to use this special probability paper in order to approximate this straight line when you use the Weibull plotting position. Okay, so I'm gonna um, have 
a quick quiz next to um, practice some of this, and then you'll have a problem set solution to a uh, problem set to attempt using for both uh, binomial distribution as well as the Weibull plotting.